would like to take a moment to remind you of the benefit and impact the colleges have on our local economy. Taken as a whole, the five colleges have over 4,500 employees, and they have operating budgets close to $700 million. Think about that for a minute. How many of you done, have done business with a, a local college? How many of you a neighbor, a friend, or a family member that's employed by a college? This has a significant impact on your lives and the lives of our, all the others here in Dutchess County. Think about this. Five colleges are either in progress or recently completed over $275 million in capital construction. That's creating jobs, both directly and indirectly, that help keep the local economy strong and prosperous. So when you think about Duchess and you think about our economic development, I'd like to suggest also that you think about our local colleges. And I thank you for being here this morning. In June 2009, Nancy Zimfer became the 12th Chancellor of the State University of New York. With more than 467,000 students, SUNY is the nation's largest comprehensive system of higher education. Chancellor Zimfer began her work with a statewide tour of SUNY's 64 campuses, which became the first phase of a system-wide strategic planning process. This plan, called the Power of SUNY, was launched in April of 2010 with the central goal of har harnessing SUNY's potential to drive economic revitalization and create a better future for every community across New York. Chancellor Zimfer holds a bachelor's degree in English education and speech, a master's degree in English literature, and a PhD in teacher education and higher administration from the Ohio State University. I am now very pleased to introduce Dr. Nancy Zimfler, Zimfer, Chancellor of the State University of New York. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. There are uh, more microphones here uh, than at most podiums, and so I'll, I'll work uh, around that a little bit uh, and hope that we keep this one right up here on top. Right, Tom? I, I will. So exactly. I um, I really am thrilled to be here to be at the Dutchess County Economic Development Corporation. Uh, when Kathy extended the invitation, it seemed like the right thing to do. I had no idea the magnitude of the turnout and the attendance, and so I'm I'm just thrilled to see all of you. Um, I do get around. Uh, it's typically in a Chevy Tahoe, and uh, that is exactly how I began my uh, experience at the State University of New York. I think, uh, as everyone could agree, uh, they start by asking you, what are you going to start with? What are you going to do first? And as a president of a local university, you would say, well, I'm going to get around. I'm going to meet people. I had no idea how big the state of New York is and what it meant to visit 64 campuses. But in 95 days and 7,500 miles in a Chevy Tahoe, 32 miles nautical miles because Maritime has a training vessel and I think one airline flight to Buffalo by way of Philadelphia because you can't fly directly there. <laughs> Uh, we made we made it around. So I, I really thank you, and I am thrilled to be here. Uh, Kathy Maloney, thank you for your leadership. It's pretty obvious that we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be as organized as we are around economic development without your leadership. Uh, and I also want to say to all the elected officials who are here, we know how important you are to our work, and so we appreciate that. Uh, David Conklin, I can't tell you how many people are raving about you, so I want you to go home and get some perspective on this. Uh, he's a great, great president and actually here today representing eight SUNY campuses that are in the Mid-Hudson Valley. Uh, I'm going to, as Jerry Benjamin knows, travel down to New Pulse or over to New Pulse. See, when you're not driving, you're not exactly sure whether you're going east or west, north or south. But I know in an hour or so I'm going to be at New Pulse. And uh, I have opportunities to be on the campuses in your region all the time. I also want to greet our uh, independent college leadership. I think we work 
really well together. There are three big groups of higher education in the state of New York. It's SUNY and CUNY and the Council and independent colleges and universities. So I think we're friends and I think we play well in the sandbox and it's just a great to have you here today. I, uh, I'm thrilled to be at the dais. Uh, Mark has been, as you can see, very entertaining, very informative. Uh, Rob, uh, Tom, Mary Kay, so you put together a great group. And whatever this President Charlie thing is all about, uh, all the uh, people who've come to the dais to say hello, I think uh, I have um, tried to acknowledge the important leadership that is in the room. That said, uh, Kathy missed a couple things, uh, grace, gratefully, but I'm now going to put them on the air, gentlemen. Uh, one of the most uh, fun assignments I had uh, in my uh, four years here is to speak to the New York State Association of Counties. Uh, Steve Aquario and, and of course, uh, Mark and uh, others uh, know the counties well. I, uh, I was a county fair queen, Kathy. <laughs> We have a great fair here in Dutchess County. The Dutchess County Fair caught my attention when I was reading the background. We could make you a duchess. A duchess. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was just a, a county fair queen, not the pork queen, but more <laughs> often than not, people refer to me that way. And I did want you to know that the person uh, standing behind my mother uh, issued this comment when the uh, tiara was extended. Uh, the ugliest one always gets it. <laughs> I know. So, uh, David, I consider this great training for being a system chancellor. You know, it's a, it's a dose of humility that most people don't get. I, uh, I did begin my teaching career in a one-room school in the foothills of the Ozarks in uh, Rolla, Missouri, Route 66, pretty famous place. And uh, today... It's hard for me to imagine the scope of the State University of New York, but it is pretty incredible. Uh, I thank you, Mark, for everything you said. What makes the State University so unusual is that under one umbrella, we have all the sectors. We have community colleges, technical colleges, liberal arts institutions, doctoral institutions, medical schools, and a host of centers and institutes like no other around the country. So I wanted to start by saying we also have a, a philosophy. We have an attitude about what makes the State University so vital to the state of New York. And I just flashed this on the screen because, uh, as, as Jerry knows, the uh, the academics in our world tend to name things, and they give them names that really elevate what we're doing and make us feel good about our mission. And, and this is the concept that universities are, in fact, anchor institutions for their community. So are school districts, so are libraries, so are museums, so are performing arts centers, so are athletic complexes. In other words, they are place-bound. So even when it gets frustrating, and even when we don't quite get what we want or get it our way, we are not moving our corporate headquarters to New Jersey. You see, we're place-bound. We are obligated, obligated to serve the state of New York. And um, it seemed important in this 150th year celebration of the Morrill Act to say that in every respect, if imitation is the finest form of flattery and Cornell is the New York State Land Grant University, we want to mirror the mission and commitment of the land grant universities all over this country. So Abraham Lincoln, if you've seen the movie, you know in the midst of the Civil War, created the Land Grant Act, which brought us these fine public universities. The guy on the right is Justin Morrill. He actually pinned the bill. He's a Vermonter. He's our neighbor. I just want you to know that in addition to understanding our place-based responsibility, we also understand outreach and serving the general public. And uh, while I uh, am well aware that the State University came together under Governor Dewey, 
I want you to know that Rockefeller also said this was his crowning achievement. It's a good thing when everybody takes credit, and he certainly helped build up a number of our campuses. I arrived at SUNY. We were celebrating our 60th anniversary, and today, 64 years old. So one of the big uh, assignments given to me by the SUNY Board of Trustees, and I bring their greetings as well, and our, our Chair Carl McCall, is that uh, we should have a very explicit vision and, and mission to describe our future. So as you do in your organizations, we had lots of conversations. Uh, after all, universities are well known for forming committees and solving problems by sometimes talking it to death, but we actually survived that, and we came through that process saying we have an audacious goal for the State University of New York that we could be, for New York, its economic engine. And we could actually enhance the quality of life of every citizen in our state. Uh, for those of you who like to read the business literature, this is Jim Collins. This is the big, hairy, audacious goal. I think it was built to last, which is 10 or 12 years old, but it is a nub of an idea that has stuck with me throughout my uh, leadership opportunities in higher education. What's your vision? What's your mission? What are you going to try to do for the people you represent? In fact, the what did Kathy say, 465,000 students and 88,000 employees and 3 million alumni. Well, as an economic engine, which is a great big idea, we are going to be innovators and entrepreneurs. We do prepare medical professionals. We can help New York be healthier. We can help New York with renewable energy. We call it SUNY and an energy smart New York. Uh, one of my personal favorites, we can contribute to sealing the leaks in the education pipeline. I'll, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We are 30 miles from every New Yorker across this great state. So if we are concerned with vibrant communities, who will be? And finally, because we live in a flattened world, we are committed to a, a global SUNY and a global New York. So that's our philosophy of who we are and how we know we can serve New York. This is our game plan. This is what we follow uh, as we move through this power of SUNY. And so uh, in a way of organizing all the actions we're trying to, to lead and to support in our work with Dutchess County and our work across the state, I've tried to boil this down to 10 steps I think SUNY can take to partner with you to drive this economic revitalization for the state of New York. Someone said to me, you know, if Albany is the capital of New York and New York is the capital of the world, we have to behave as if, if New York gets it right, everyone else will follow our lead. So I have to say to you, as a chancellor of a large public university system, if I, if we don't have the partnership with the governor, we don't have a champion. So when Governor Cuomo was elected and I was in the very early stages of my tenure here at the State University of New York, we worked really hard to put together the kind of confidence we thought the governor needed in us. He returned the favor. He supported, as Mark will recall, NY SUNY 2020, which was really to create an investment strategy for SUNY over time. Uh, NY SUNY 2020 was his idea. Initially, he funded our four doctoral institutions to create, uh, if you will, capital facilities in which we could house research and innovation and entrepreneurship at Stony Brook and Buffalo and Binghamton and Albany. That's four campuses. The other 60 wanted to know if the governor loved them too. So in year two, he broadened the base of NY SUNY 2020 and has invited all of our campuses to apply for funding. I hear David and Jerry were just about to announce the recipients of those funds. And, and actually, somewhat to our surprise, in, in year three, he gave us round three of these NY SUNY 2020 grants, investing in our universities 
so that they can return the investment for the state of New York. Point one, we needed a champion. We found that champion. Now, I want to say a little bit about this map because when I got to New York, every agency had a map of the regions of New York. The problem was that one agency said we had 14, and another said 15, and another said 12, and I couldn't, I, Mary Kay, I could not sort, sort this out. And so this is not a perfect map. You should hear the people in the North Country talk about, hey, the North Country runs north to south, not east to west, but, you know, they're kind of working it out. And to me, the Regional Economic Development Council concept helped us think about all the attributes and the assets we have at SUNY, and the dots and the circles are our campuses, our incubators, our centers for advanced technology, which I think the goal being get us all together at a single table. Uh, I did ask the dais how we're doing with the REDC here in Dutchess County, and I think the real the highest goal is that it gets us working better together. And so if we have eight institutions in this region, we have to work better together too. And uh, on top of that, we've decided that we need a set of incubators. We need to incubate the kind of ideas that got, are going to uh, expand jobs and opportunity and growth. And so we have five of these incubators. The one, you're a little bit uh, straddled. Uh, there's, there's an incubator being established in Albany and another uh, in New York City. Uh, it won't impede. It should expand our ability to innovate and create entrepreneurial opportunities for this region. We don't need 10 of them. They're too big to put one in every region, but five across the state should really help us. And the other thing we've done, we've hired a new president for our research foundation. We bring in about a billion dollars to New York annually because we submit grants, we ask the federal government for money. When they return the favor, we are grateful. On, uh, I think Sheila mentioned this on Monday, Senator Schumer will be in New York City to applaud a $15 million grant SUNY has received to train displaced workers. And that's the little ecosystem that this slide uh, creates for you. In other words, we use our research to generate ideas. We seed those ideas in our laboratories and incubators. We get seed fundi funding from investors, and you already know from the governor, New York needs more venture capital to seed the ideas created by our really smart people working together with your companies to commercialize and take our ideas to market. We get the most money for our research in medical research, in biomedical research. That's where the investment capital tends to be, biotechnology, nanotechnology. So I just thought this is an ecosystem that we can all participate in. And then I just pulled out this Mid-Hudson Valley region to say here are our eight campuses working hand in glove with you. And thanks to the leadership of David Conklin and the presidents of all of our eight SUNY campuses in this region, we are working well with each other. That has not always been the case, but our commitment to collaboration and collective impact is absolutely immense. So um, we also feel that the State University of New York should be a thought leader. I don't know if that's a, a phrase in your vocabulary, but we need to have national meetings and national convenings, the first of which three years ago was in Buffalo, and it was all about, Kathy, the role of higher education in economic development. And then, I don't know how many of you stay up to hear Steve Colbert, but he invented a word last year or so called truthiness. Does anybody here, is anybody here young enough to know that he invented this word? We, <laughs> we invented, thank you, Mark, a word too, and we call that word systemness. And it embodies our philosophy that the whole has to be greater 
than the sum of the parts. If we can get 64 campuses, eight in this region, moving in a compatible collective direction, imagine, imagine what we can do together. So we've had a big national convening saying to the world, SUNY is going to show every public higher education system in this country, and by the way, around the world, what it means to work collaboratively together. So you heard it here first. It is now on Wikipedia. It's called Systemness. Now, another strategy that we are supporting is our work with other campuses outside the SUNY system, but within the state of New York. And I want to say to our independent colleagues, I haven't, I've worked in Ohio and Wisconsin, New York. I've never been in a state where the public-private research universities have ever been able to sit down at the same table and make happy and create a future for their state. I am so proud to say from Rochester Institute of Technology to RPI to Cornell to, to NYU, these research universities, the research uh, CUNY and SUNY, have framed what they consider to be New York's indigenous capacity. It won't surprise you. Nanotechnology, biomedical life sciences research, high performance computing, and advanced energy technology. If we stick with what we do best and we figure out how to do that together, we cannot be stopped. And I, I don't think you'd necessarily know we've come to a common table, but you should know that highly competitive national, international universities have figured out what you're trying to figure out with your REDC. It works better if we can figure out ways to work more effectively together. And then, um, actually, the good news is I'm making progress, and I'll fly by to ten, my tenth strategy here, but the sixth among them is that we have to be more sensitive to the workforce demands of your region and your county in determining what degree programs to grow on our campuses. I know that sounds pretty simple, but it's really hard to change the degree portfolio of a campus, and especially when some of the industries you represent turn on a dime. I can remember being at Plattsburgh, SUNY Plattsburgh, where the laboratory on one day was for wind turbines. They cleared it out, and the next day it was on aviation technology because they got a new company in the North Country that needed those kinds of technical skills from the workforce. We have to be more agile. We have to work with the Department of Labor. We have to speculate where the jobs are going so that our graduates can fill your needs. And I'm not saying that this is exclusively a career path degree formulation. We know, I'm an English major, we need English, we need philosophy, we need public policy, but we also need clear career paths for our students and for our graduates. As a consequence, one of our big bright ideas, and this one, Mark, is where we, Kathy, we really need your help. We would imagine that for every student who desires an internship or a co-op experience or an apprenticeship experience, use your terminology, preferably paid, that you will help find a place for our students while they are on our campuses so that uh, it might be through co-op or an internship, it might be through uh, working with an entrepreneur. It might be through a thing we call service learning where our students help social agencies and not-for-profit agencies. How can you help us by partnering with us to find internship positions within your companies and agencies? For this result, we know that if a student is in an organized co-op experience, which is part of their higher education degree program, a degree requirement, they will graduate on time. And if you're a parent, this is still important to you 
graduate on time, graduate uh, with a better academic record because when you're more organized and when somebody's supervising your work experiences and you're working in a career-oriented field, you will graduate with less debt because you're being paid in this internship. And most importantly, 90% of the students across the country who engage in a co-op experience get a job offer from one of the companies where they co-op to live and work in your community. There's nothing wrong with that idea. We just need to partner up through the Economic Development Corporation, through the Chamber, through the REDC to find more of these placements. It costs you a little money up front. The gain is unequivocal. Uh, this is the $15 million grant I mentioned earlier. Uh, the state, the, the federal government has asked us to retrain displaced workers. We're all about that. We are thanking Senator Schumer on Monday for that work. And this, uh, I mentioned early, is our commitment to the education pipeline. You may not be aware, but nearly 40% of all children who come to kindergarten are not ready for kindergarten. They will not be ready for third and fourth grade assessments. By the eighth grade, their skills in English language arts, math, and science have deteriorated to such a point that 25 to 35 percent of all ninth graders in this country will not graduate from high school, let alone attend college, graduate from college, career ready. This is an obligation the State University of New York has embraced. We train the teachers who teach the kids who come to college, ready or not. You should be very pleased that we care about the relationship of K-12 to higher ed. We talked early, the BOCES as related to our community college, as related to our baccalaureate degree experience. And then finally, because people are learning in all different modalities, we have launched a concept called Open SUNY. We have gone digital. We already have 150 degree and certificate programs exclusively online. And given the explosive nature of uh, digital learning across this country, we have a goal of 100,000 more graduates trained through online instruction. This is my belief, I hope it is yours. Educating more people and educating them better is simply the best bet any society can make. Thank you.